And Gary, here we are. Benway Jazz. Us if you need more info. All right, let's get going. That was the most succinct yet. I uh, get them down. We're getting <laughs> them down. I feel like this topic today today needs a lot of space to breathe. So what's today's topic? <laughs> You're saying that like I'm not ready, and I'm ready. <laughs> no, I didn't um, mean that at all. <laughs> today's topic is Apgar scores. Oh, it's two Apgar, words. Scores yeah. is the second part. Right. Yeah, Apgar is the thing they do when babies are born to check and see, um, like how healthy they are. Correct. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I know that is, and this will well, be because a, you have children. That right. was, I was yeah. kind of show. <laughs> yes, it's true. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know it had we not done the. Um, oh, what do they call it? Like the it's birthing class basically. Yeah. So yeah. before Tyler was born a decade ago, wow. Um, we went to that and it was a. Uh, it was like a thing. Like you know, you booked it and Ron was like, "Oh, it's like four evenings, like two hours a night. Like we can do that. That's fine." Um, and maybe it was more than four. I don't know. It's been a long time. Uh, and I'm like, "Yeah, that's good. I mean, I you know, I'm always up to learn something new, and this is definitely uncharted territory for us." It was and, hardcore. Uh, those classes. It was. Yeah, I I respected nurses before then, but having gone through that class, like you know, the eventualities that the uh, the nurse shared were like, oh, that's a thing I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know I needed to stress out about that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Incidentally, everyone was healthy and whatnot, so uh, that's cool. But but wow, yeah. Uh, that was a thing. They talked about how they would uh, do the Apgar score, and uh, it really meant nothing after the first 24 hours of life anyway, so don't worry about it too much if it seemed like low or whatever. It is named for, I believe her name is Virginia Apgar. I'll check this poll out. I might be wrong. Um, <laughs> no, who, you're, you're absolutely right. Who um, was a doctor, I believe, in the... Shit, what years? Hmm. At this point, I'm going to be like, hi, it was 1948 or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what years. I just know that at the time, like, it was ridiculous that a woman would be, would be a doctor. And that was part of the, uh, part of what she brought to medicine. In addition to the APGAR score was like, yeah, it turns out you don't actually need a penis to be a doctor. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, so and then they took it out of textbook, textbooks. Be a doctor, you need penis. Also, so she was an obstetri I can't say that. Some sort of a baby anesthesiologist. <laughs> and um, but also one part of the story that I like about this is that they made the APGAR score what they call a backronym. So they like made it into an acronym after the fact to fit the name, which oh. I like. What is it? What is the uh, should we guess what the acronym is? Well, they're like, it's for all the criteria. So they basically broke her name down into the, do you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. I but yeah, I yeah. never, I had never heard the term backronym before. And I was just like, mm. well, this is amazing. Isn't, isn't, is P, isn't PHP a backronym? Is it? See, I don't know. See, all the things that I'm I don't just, believe I so. come in assuming but, that I'm like, no, we came in knowing what it stood for. <laughs> I thought it was, I might be wrong. We'll, I think we'll it's Wikipedia. been a redefined acronym. I think that originally PHP was for personal homepage, and then it became something hypertext oh. processor. It's the first P for. For after score. <laughs> I, bet, I bet it's for PHP. P PHP hypertext processor. Is it is a recursive acronym? I, hate I, I think I think it is. I think it recursive is, actually. Acronym. Yeah. Well, GNU's not Unix. It's like the dumbest because I saw, I saw acronym in the world. I saw a thing on Twitter recently where somebody was trying to explain recursion to a non-programmer and somebody yes. and somebody was like, just tell them about the PHP, what PHP stands for. So I think PHP is recursive. Uh, oh, well, that would make sense then. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, I shipped code before we figure out what AppCar stands for. I shipped code recently that uh, had recursion, and I missed one uh, wait that we would need to break recursion, mm -hmm. which, like, recursion is a really fun way to kill a server silently. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't throw, like, an infinite nesting warning or anything. It just stops working and consumes a lot of CPU. Recursion is the reason why uh, we sent an email to 150 people nine times in over the. Summer. That doesn't sound bad though. If you caught it after nine, that's pretty. That's pretty. Well, great. yeah, because the see because it it was designed to break after it hit the the actual number of recipients. And the thing is that the number of recipients was never incrementing, so it just hit the same 150 every time. Um, so it's a good thing that it only went out nine times and, and it didn't yes. like a million times. And then we like realized it was happening like later and had to kill it manually. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was like a, it was like a, a while loop that had like, that just like while true instead of like, instead of actually having a condition it's just like, yeah, while, while true. Um, I had one recently where a, we built this site for a client and, uh, they oh in WordPress when you remove users right since an admin I noticed all admins that this user has been removed, um, so they ran a script to do some automated cleaning and removed like three hundred thousand users which queued up three hundred thousand emails to every administrator on the site, right, um, which is fine I mean like fine okay I just put a filter in place like dump it to my spam or whatever like mark it as red delete it like I see what's happening it's okay whatever, um, however I guess it wasn't uh, I guess it was a bit more disruptive for like non nerds <laughs> who are like how do i delete three I, and I'm, i think i'm exaggerating by like a hundred i think it was like three thousand not three hundred thousand even so it was like way more email than you would want about stuff you don't care about anyway so anyway i assume a ticket was created to filter that so that not everyone <laughs> is notified in the future i don't know i just went oh, all right well, all right so drum roll what does apgar What's the Apgar background? Well, I wanted to, I wanted to think about okay, we could do that. What the, what the Apgar backronym is, but I wanted to see, see if we could figure out other backronyms because I know that I oh. I know that I know some, but now I can't remember any of them. I I, I mean, like the the concept wasn't new to me, but I just I've never heard the term backronym, so I was like, well, that's my favorite portmanteau of the week. Like, <laughs> is is our backronyms better when it's a person's name? I think the answer is yes. I think it makes it more challenging. But I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with really, I'm not consciously aware of other backronyms, I guess. All right, so. all right, all right. Now I'm going to have to. If only we had some sort of device that we could look up these things. Yeah. All right. What does APGAR stand for? <laughs> APGAR stands for Appearance, Pulse, Grimace, activity, and respiration. Grimace is like when they poke them in the heel with a pin or something and they... It's like how they respond. Dang, quit that crap. I'm new here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just got here. Stop poking me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how cute would it be if babies were born able to speak? <laughs> just they're like, like hear their what? voice. <laughs> Come on, quit your shit. <laughs> they all sound like Mel Brooks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, a, oh, lot of, a lot of a lot of a lot of acts are backronyms. Acts? Like, what acts? As in like legal like like acts. oh <laughs> like the like the USA Patriot Act is a is a backronym for uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism. Oh, fuck that. Wait a, <laughs> that's less. No, I was, looking, I was looking for more fun backronyms. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fail. Uh, <laughs> but I, I know that there, I, I've seen that in other, I've seen that in other acts that were like being uh, put before Congress or whatever, uh, that like, it's very obviously a backronym because it's like something that like fits very neatly into whatever the name of the thing is. It's like, no, you didn't, you did not just magically come up with that. You made, you had the thing and then you've like, ported it back. <laughs> did either of you take into consideration initials when you had kids? No. Um, yeah, so Katie Kovar, there's two K's, like that obviously negated a middle name with a K in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't think we were cons considering one, but I mean, it, it was like a, yeah, we need to make sure that 
you know, not something offensive, but otherwise, no, not really. Mm -hmm. At some point there was an attempt to make Tyler's nickname TJ for his initials and it, it, it didn't stick because I don't know. I feel like that stick. happened with my brother as well with TJ and it didn't stick. That's interesting. Not a catchy one. I don't yeah. know a lot of TJs, you know? Hmm. So it Still is- waiting uh, for that, that fun acronym. <laughs> yeah. It'll occur to you at like two in the morning. It will. Yeah. I'm not finding you can, anything. And here. you can not wake us up, but you can post it in Slack. <laughs> Do you all, um, so do you turn your phones off at night? Or maybe not turn them off, but I mean, I'm, I like my phone's always on silent. But it occurs to me that if there were, were ever an emergency in the middle of the night, well, let me back up. At one point, there was an emergency in the middle of the night in my family. And so I missed a phone call at three o'clock in the morning. But like, what's the reasonable expectation for me leaving my phone on at night so that I can take that call at three o'clock in the morning. So what I do and what, yeah. and what I've set up on Aaron's phone is um, have it set to automatically go to do not disturb after whatever time. And then you can whitelist essentially um, certain phone numbers in your contacts so that mm -hmm. even when your phone is on do not disturb, you get calls through from those numbers. Mm. The other thing that you could do, and this is what I do like just normally, is um, you can block all calls. I, I, I'm assuming you have an iPhone, but I'm assuming you could probably do this on Android too. Um, you can block all ca calls that are from phone numbers that are not in your contacts. But that sort of requires that everybody in your contacts is a phone number that you care about and not just a phone number that you put there so that the caller ID said the thing that you wanted it to say when it called so that you get the call. Because like, yeah. obviously when you start doing that, then you have to put numbers in your contacts so that when they call again, you get the call. But I don't want to get a call from my plumber at three o'clock in the morning either. <laughs> I, but maybe I don't know that I would say that. Emergency. <laughs> if my plumber is like going through the phone and nobody's answered and they get to me and it's really an emergency, I feel like I'd be okay waking up. With okay. It, you know, well, that, that's fair. <laughs> He's like, um, I just have to talk so there's two options money. for you. There's two options for you, Gary. You can either just you can either block all calls from anybody who's not in your contacts and only get calls uh, from people in, in your contacts and just leave it that way. Um, yep. That's what I do normally. Or you can do that. And in addition, when your phone goes into do not disturb, uh, there's a you go into you have to go into the actual contact and you think it's like add to emergency contacts or something so or something like that. Um, so that when it um, when that phone number calls you, then you you get it. Oh, you're missing the obvious third option, which is feel guilty for a day or two once every decade that I missed a call at three in the morning. Mm -hmm. That seems easier. I no. turn off my phone entirely. There's so much also, mental overhead with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I turn off my phone entirely, but also now I'm thinking that I shouldn't. But also I just feel like the types of emergencies that have, I'm like, I'm far away from family and stuff. So the type of emergencies that would be happening, I would be of like no use in the middle mm -hmm. of the night. Like I'm trying to plan a flight or something i don't even know <laughs> yeah but wouldn't you wouldn't you want to know even if it was like two o'clock in the morning if like one of your parents had a heart attack and is going being rushed to the hospital like wouldn't wouldn't you yes. rather yeah, know that than like wake up in the morning and be like oh my god that happened last night and i was asleep yeah so the circumstance i'm thinking of was a, a death but i don't even put my phone next to my bed so like i don't even know like it doesn't go into <clears throat> that room <laughs> I'm horrible with my phone. I'm just realizing this now. <laughs> <laughs> but the circumstance I'm thinking of is a death in the family. So like if I, I knew, you know, three hours later, it didn't make the person any less dead, right? right. Like, so mm -hmm. it wasn't like emergency is maybe the wrong word to use in that phrase. Though. Right. But I mean, our, our, our justification is that it would be better to know than to find out later and be like, oh my God, and I was sleeping through it and like this happened and like, you know, I wasn't able to talk to whoever called me and Mm -hmm. yeah because nobody I expects do... you to be like conscious <clears throat> at three o'clock in the morning yeah like they know they're disrupting you <laughs> yeah i think that's the point too is like if somebody's calling at three in the morning like it's it it's obviously not like a social thing right <laughs> right and i think I, to that point like i think like my parents you know like they're not far from me so if they were to call in the middle of the night it would be like omg drive us to the hospital or, or i don't know something it would be important they're not being like oh what are you up to just hey uh Sleeping or like <laughs> what's on Netflix tonight? Yeah. 
Well, speaking of what's on Netflix, I haven't mm-hmm. watched it yet, but I just saw there was a David Lynch film of him interviewing a monkey for 15 minutes. So I'm very oh. excited to watch that later. <laughs> That's the, okay. So um, <laughs> one of my favorite uh, Instagram accounts, Nick Cave and the Bad Memes. Um, I just realized that the dude that does it does the, like uh, like sort of an axe swing anything sort of thing. And somebody um, sent him that link. And then it, so it didn't show the link, but it showed his response. And I was like, what is he like? Because it was, it was obviously a David Lynch thing. It was like, here, look at this David Lynch thing. And he's like, oh, my God, what was that? And I was like, what is he, what, what is he watching? So now I know. Now I have context. Now I can go back and find it. Okay, good. <laughs> Uh, how does the interview go? I have no, I haven't seen you it. Haven't, you haven't watched it? Yeah. No, okay. I just, it's on my list. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is going to be probably the best 15 minutes of my day. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh. No offense, everybody. <laughs> you just can't beat David Lynch interviewing. No, I'm taking it. Sorry. I mean, I think the monkey just by itself would be the two of us. <laughs> I, um, I, so if you had the opportunity to spend uh 15 minutes with the monkey or 15 minutes with us you would take the monkey is what you're saying chris i'm saying the monkey is not going to disappoint <laughs> Ooh, like, like point blank uh... point blank the monkey is always going to be a source of entertainment have you met a monkey huh. gary ouch uh, <laughs> gary, gary so... we have to step it up <laughs> <laughs> really i'm not saying that you to... guys disappoint oh. me i'm just saying monkey is like you know, on the list. Can I share of like, some monkey stories? Have you have you met a monkey? Have you have you uh, encountered? Well, monkeys? the first one is uh, there's actually no monkey in the story, but it's a story about monkeys, so it's good. Um, <laughs> so Rhonda went camping with uh, the older two kids. Cubs got camping this weekend. I stayed home with Charlotte, um, and it was Saturday morning. I went in to get her, and I walked in, and she's like in her crib dancing, and she goes, "I'm a monkey!" Ooh ooh ah ah, and was like scratching her armpits and stuff. And I'm like, oh, great, we got a monkey. And I was, you know, teasing her and stuff. And then she was like, now daddy a monkey. So she would not get up until I made monkey sounds and danced around, which was fantastic. I, I loved that she was just like, oh, you're going to tease me? Well, it's on, old man. <laughs> now you're a monkey. How do you like that? That's, that's yeah, fair. Dance. Yeah. And then I got a speeding ticket on the way down to see Ronda and the kids with her. Um, which, Is that because which of also, the monkey hijinks? <laughs> no, I was speeding. <laughs> there was no re- it was when I was like the officer pulled you over. He's like, "Do you know why I pulled you over?" Like, Not a clue. <laughs> you were speeding. You know how fast you were going. I hope it wasn't really fast. <laughs> faster than no the speed limit. See, every time they ask me that question, I'm like, "Yeah, I know exactly how fast I was going. I was looking at the speedometer. <laughs> like, I was going 84 miles an hour." And then, and then I, the, uh, the officer's like, "Oh." Yeah, that's about right. This, this was like a, I'm driving and it's like a three lane road, and I look in the, my rearview mirror and there's like a, you know, thing flashing behind me. Motorcycle, that's the thing. Motorcycle flashing behind me. I'm like, oh, I better get out of the way. And I pulled over a lane, and the cop followed me. I'm like, oh, gee, oh shit. It's for me. <laughs> so I pulled in the parking lot, and then uh, it's. I will say that the internet has made getting pulled over a much more pleasant experience. Like you know, prolific network connections could, i remember getting pulled over back in the day it would be like a 30 minute process waiting for the call in and wait to get a call back on checking the plate and the license and stuff now you can just go back to his machine and bang 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 and he was like here's your ticket please slow it down all right <laughs> like I've, I've gotten out of um significantly higher tickets by being like honest to the police officers like when they say do you know how fast you're going or like are you in a hurry or something like, like, yeah, I know how fast I was going. This is how fast I was going. Sorry. Like I like, you know, or like there's, there's one time when we were coming back from, I believe, uh, uh, the aquarium in Monterey and there's this particular like hill on the freeway. And like, I noticed that I was going too fast over the hill (laughs) as I was doing it. And I looked down and I said, Oh shit. And then I looked behind me and I said, Oh shit. Uh, and and like and so in this case i i said i said like yeah i i'm sorry i you know wasn't paying attention and then i saw and then yeah and he's like and then he looks in the back and sees the kids like well you know just you know i appreciate your honesty you know just 
uh, slow down next time or something and, and I didn't get a ticket. And at one time I got a significantly lower ticket because I like, I named the speed that I was going. Um, and he's like, I could have, I could have given you more, but I'm only going to mark it down as this much. And yeah. Oh yeah. I was not lying at all when he asked me if I knew how fast I was going. No idea. Do you know what speed limit is here? Also, no. <laughs> like I was deep in thought about, um, <laughs> I was deep in th yes. Space? <laughs> yes. I was deep in thought about Skylab. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it's worth, I think you should have said that. I think, you know, uh, you know I'm sorry. I, I really space. wasn't paying attention to the signs. I was thinking about space. Do you realize they tried sending like a rubber, like big tube up to space to emulate a shower? Like that's, that's what I was thinking about officer. Of course it didn't work. The water just well, globs they, onto you and then you feel like a vacuum cleaner. Like how did no one drown in that experiment? Like, <laughs> it cart you away for entirely different reasons. <laughs> and they're like, uh, yeah, like I'm definitely gonna give you the higher fine. <laughs> Slow down. Maybe take the bus, weirdo. <laughs> you want to think about space? Take public transit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna talk about monkeys. Oh, okay. Uh, I have one I, monkey story, but you go ahead. Because I have met a monkey. Uh, huh? it, it was a monkey in Sri Lanka, um, and so we were on this. Uh, we were on this what safari. To my it disappeared. <laughs> I don't yeah, have a face safari <laughs> in, in quotations uh, because it was really just a boat ride, a boat tour through various like, you know, island, little tiny island things. Um, but every time, like right. wherever you go, um, there are people along like the side of, of the route that the boats take uh, in their own like little like speed boats or rowboats or whatever. And they're like, they've got like, there's this guy with a baby crocodile and there's the guy with the baby monkey. And there's like the little thing where you, where they like a fish hatchery where you stick your, your feet in the fish hatchery and the fish will eat off the dead skin off your, off your feet because that's the thing that the tourists want to do. Like all sorts of things, every step of the way, there's always a thing. Um, and so before we realized that that was really what this, this, this safari was about was meeting all the locals with their pet whatever wild animal that they have domesticated so that they can like get money from stupid tourists uh the first one that came up to the boat was a monkey and they're like oh monkey and of course and so brad parbs your friend and mine brad parbs uh was on the boat and he was in front and he immediately like his eyes light up and he gets like this like his whole face just explodes in happiness at, the, at this monkey and the and the kid is it's a kid and he's offering the monkey to somebody and brad's like of course i'm gonna hold a monkey Take a like monkey. how yeah. would i not <laughs> and then <laughs> and then uh as as uh, the kid is like um so that's that's gonna be 1200 rupees and he's like wait what <laughs> i have to pay for the monkey <laughs> I have to pay to hold this monkey and he didn't have any money on him so like like we sort of like went around the boat and like people were chipping in a little bit as a, you know, and so we ended up paying off this kid and the kid's like waiting there like a, stupid tourists like i just this is not making my monkey worth it <laughs> um so the yeah so then all the subsequent stops and we had the, the dude come up with the baby crocodile and like like everybody else like the, the boat drivers eventually like no 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 except Forget it. we're broke dude <laughs> Not it sounds English. like a, a weird version of the Jungle Cruise from Disneyland. It, it, it very much was a weird version of the Jungle Cruise. <laughs> much less exciting, but very, very similar to the Jungle Cruise, yes. Not as punny. I, including, including actually, like, at some point, um, so we stopped at this island where, where they make cinnamon. Uh, and as we were leaving the island, and, they, and we met the, the, the local family there that, like, has been making cinnamon for generations on this one particular island, and it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so as we were leaving, the, bo <laughs> the boat stalled and it wouldn't start. <laughs> and so we were like floating, we were drifting in the water. Like, brr, 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 brr. like I don't know how, like for a good 20 minutes or so, uh, just like sitting in the water, like, are we going to make it back? <laughs> like, what happens when the boat doesn't start? <laughs> Yeah, what's our plan B? There's no like triple A that's <laughs> yeah. that's coming out here. Are we sure. need to, are we to swim or like? So I'm leaving a very terse trip advisor review on this boat ride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are already terse trip advisor reviews. If we like, we oh, like I was looking Over at there? some of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is definitely. It oh, definitely was I... like definitely like this is not a safari. <laughs> oh well, the internet's garbage. Okay. 
we're back to that again. This is all just people selling stuff. Meanwhile, let's go back to how Gary has turned into like a nefarious shadow. I don't understand. Like I can't. Like I get. Oh. Oh, there we are. But what's like now? It's it's because the like, light. It's because the background. The background is brighter than the foreground. I get that, but it wasn't doing this earlier, and I haven't like relocated or moved. I. It's just. It's funny. And I was leaving this close earlier, but I had to get in and like it had to find me, and now it's oh, I know who you are. When, when you were leaning back before, it was basically like you also needed one of those voice gurbling things, like a witness <laughs> protection situation. It's like, <laughs> maybe it's Gary, but My maybe it's Gary. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think you use your name when you're gurbling. That's just probably true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, he blew it right out of the gate. <laughs> My name Crap. is Barry Bovar. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I don't want to tell my monkey story now because yours is better. <laughs> Why? Because I actually met a real live monk monkey, and your your story is just about monkeys. The uh, the city I grew up in had a they call it was when I was a kid it was called the chimp farm, and they rescued um, monkeys and chimpanzees and other animals. I mean, but, really, any kind of animal that had been in <clears throat> rescued from where. Well, I'm getting there. <laughs> they were That's rescued from, from other private, humans. <laughs> private, yeah, private owners. So, like, okay. you know. Um, they had, I'm trying to remember, like they had some weird animals that some celebrities had and then like they couldn't keep them. I like, you think of like a Mike Tyson owning a tiger situation. Like at some point, like Mike Tyson doesn't own that tiger anymore. It's gotta go somewhere. Um, they didn't own Mike Tyson's tiger. That's just the only example I can think of. Cause really like the celebr celebrities, quote unquote, they named were really not celebrities. They were just, or celebrities I don't recall anymore. Anyway, so the chimp farm was like, you know, it got bigger and bigger and bigger when I was a kid, and you, we would go there when, when I was real little, and then somewhere along the way, the monkeys got angry and started throwing poo at people. <laughs> well, as soon as that hit the newspaper, then, like, you know, attendance died immediately, and that was, like, the big stink in a tiny town was, like, oh, the chimp farm, the monkeys throw poo at you because they're not happy. Yeah. Big so, stink! <laughs> um, so, so we were down, uh, we were down there, I don't know, like, November something last year we were down there and uh I I like it I looked at TripAdvisor and no one was talking about having poof on with them and I'm like well I haven't been here in a long time so <laughs> we're looking for something to do with the kids and I was like well this will be an interesting one so we went <clears throat> to not have poof flung at us um a lot more volunteers than I remember and the they've really cleaned up the place and <laughs> the animals have a lot more they had to because there's poo all over <laughs> yeah well, I mean, it's Florida, so you get a hurricane and washes that away, right? You know, it's like like pressure washes everything. Um, but yeah, it's it's it there's it doesn't smell pleasant, but it's better than it was. And I, I they really seem to be like truly trying to take care of these older animals and whatnot. Um, so that's cool. But then I was uh, we had dinner with my grandpa later that evening. I said, oh yeah, I took the kids to the uh, chimp farm. He said, oh yeah, the uh, the monkeys there. They still throw poo at you or. Uh, they fix that? <laughs> So, I mean, it had been like, you know, 25 years, and that was still like the question is like, have they fixed that poop, fl poop flinging situation? <laughs> they fixed it. <laughs> it's, uh, anyway, I don't think it's called the uh, chimp farm anymore. I think it's called like the Pinellas County Primate Sanctuary or something. That yeah, sounds a lot I, I, better would, and I would think that chimp the good farm rebranding is, is, is yeah. probably uh, a little bit uh, speciesist. Uh, I mean, even just beyond that, like the concept of farming. Like these animals mm -hmm. was like probably a little, you know, words change over time. And I think when I was a kid, like, oh, chimp farm made sense for what it was. But now it's, it's a pretty objectionable Thank idea. You. Yeah. Although like Thanks at the time sense. when we were kids, like a farm is just a place where animals live. A farm isn't a place where we're actually using animals for the production of food. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's true. I don't know like, if my, my parents thought the name chimp farm was somewhat on the nose or not. But I, you know, I doubt it. I think it was just a place. And and now um, it's there and I think it was crazy, exp I'm not crazy, I think it was like 50 bucks for the family to go, which, you know, I think it was like 50 cents an animal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, it I, I wouldn't consider, a good that, thing, so that's good. consider that crazy expensive. There's lots of was, museums and stuff that we've gone <clears> to that are far more than 50 bucks uh, for the entire family. Yeah, well, I will say it was not worth the 50 bucks. Okay. Like there, there were <laughs> museums fair. that I know of in the area I would, I would have paid more and been a lot more uh, uh so what you're saying is it's longer. expensive for what it is 
which is basically yes, a, that's a, yes, a place and to have has, no poop flown, <laughs> flung. At I know you? you had the privilege of I mean, not having poop flung at you. <laughs> Look, maybe yeah, that's the deal. yeah, maybe that would have added to the experience if we had to dodge poo. I would have felt like I got my That's what I thought. That's what I thought you was going to happen in that story. Was like they started throwing poo, attendance went up, people loved it. I was looking for that part of the story too. (laughs) Like I was looking for the the attendance uh, skyrocketing, rocketing after the monkeys started to fling poo. But I I, I guess I guess it makes more sense that people would not go. So you're familiar with like the rails to trails idea, right? Like you take like old railroads and they get turned into hiking or biking trails. Mm -hmm. Um, So the entire length of the county. In Ellis County, um, there was a old railroad track that I don't know. I like I rode in the train once when I was a kid, and it was like the oh we're gonna run it more time before we shut down this rail, and it was probably you know 1985 or something, um, and it was a crappy train, like <laughs> you know, very crappy train. Um, so with, anyway, they replaced the uh, railroad with um, this long trail. I don't know how long the county is. I would guess it's got to be 40 miles. Uh, north to south um, and the uh, the trail goes right behind the chimp farm what, mm. what was at the time the chimp farm so uh, fortunately they were not facing the trail so someone was getting poo flung at them on the trail <laughs> but when you rode by the monkeys heard people back there and were yelling and screaming and so that was always a fun part to ride through because it was you know like through like swamp flats of Florida and on the one side it's like you know marshy and stuff on the other side there's monkeys hollering at you it felt like you had traveled somewhere very exotic as opposed to you know a quarter mile south of Klosterman Boulevard in Tarpon Springs <laughs> <laughs> well we've reached that time for the uh listening <clears throat> questions yes. uh and we don't have the listener questions we have uh host questions <laughs> uh but it's hosts plural now at least instead of being just uh, Allison <laughs> questions uh, so we'll do one of Allison. Did we not finish up my questions last time? We didn't finish up your questions. We only did two. Did you submit questions? I haven't. So I just asked we... my questions. Okay. <laughs> Chris I was admonished. The process. The process. <laughs> Clearly. I, I gave Clearly. you shit about it, but I don't even do it either. So. <laughs> yeah, when, um, you, when you're the one that reads the questions, you're allowed to talk smack. It's true. Yes. It's true. Okay. Uh, so Allison, uh, <clears throat> December of last decade, Wow. Uh, asks if everyone lost the ability to sneeze, how long would it take us to realize it? Oh, like individually, I feel like I would not notice for, I mean, a very long time. It wouldn't occur to me like, hey, you remember sneezing? I haven't heard one of those in a while. <laughs> but like, I think Rhonda would point it out in two or three days. It would, be like, no sneezing. Sneezing? It would be one of those things where like, you would totally forget about it, and then you would see some some like pop culture reference to sneezing, like somebody talks about it in a movie or somebody sneezes in a movie. I mean, sneezing in a movie doesn't happen very often either. But like every once in a while, there'll be something to be like, "Wait a second, what just happened? <laughs> what was that?" <laughs> they'll be like, "Wait, that was a thing we used to do. What happened to that?" <laughs> or like when you get sick and you just didn't sneeze, like you just. I don't know. It's a specific type of sickness, though, to sneeze. So, Ugh. I wonder. Um, like, I wonder if we had the same reaction to like seeing a payphone in a movie. People like putting a coin, and they're like, "Why are they doing that? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> what, what's that thing that they're putting money into? What is? Why that? are they kicking their head forward and making a ch sound really loudly? <laughs> Spitting everywhere. That's weird." Yeah, but well, can you can you imagine? If, can you imagine if if uh, I don't know if there's any movies with actual phone freaking, but like. Like that, communicating that in a film to like to modern audiences who doesn't know what a phone is, that's not this thing. Like, I mean, my God. Yeah. You would have to start off with like a, like some kind of way to explain how old wired phones work. Right. And you have, well, and and like, that's all like, that's all predicated on, on the sound that it makes when the coin goes into the machine. So like, so like, you'd have to explain that, that putting money into the machine was like a required part of the process. I can almost see this. Like it starts off and like that's the opening scene as a coin goes in the machine and some like dude hears the sound and like sort of starts thinking about it and trying to figure out how to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already bored with this movie actually. <laughs> I'm not going to watch it. Uh, okay. If you could, 
if you could only eat soup, this is a Gary question. Uh, if you could only eat soup for a month, what would your strategy be to avoid to avoid soup burnout? I think well, this is- I had an agenda in this question, and I will be forthright about that. And my agenda is, I would say that chili is a form of soup. Damn it! Oh <laughs> no! I mean, it's spo- I suppose it depends. As on- are stews. No. I think stews are. I think chili is its own thing. Yeah. I. That's well, so crazy maybe. because like stews are like a chunky soup. soup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say that the strategy to avoid soup burnout is obviously to have a different soup every night of the month, or to or to like cycle through a couple different soups. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I would do is make like five huge batches of soup, right. and then uh-huh. do the thing where you like separate them into like single servings in bags and freeze them. And then you just grab your appropriate soup every yeah. day. I must have been hungry when I wrote this because <laughs> now I just like, I'm like, well, I'm going to go inside and have a bowl of soup. I think we have tomato. Also, can you like pair it with things? Because I would pair it with like different breads or like different something. <sighs> Doesn't that like, sound crackers good? Crackers or something. We had, uh, yeah. we made soup last night. So I actually have soup uh, <laughs> waiting for me. And corn. Chris bread. wins again. <laughs> I know, right? We, we did a uh, grilled cheese and tomato soup. It's like a kind of a standard in our house from time to time and the kids love it Ron and i love it yeah yeah i used to i used to like that when i could eat gluten and cheese yeah yeah <laughs> now it's just so tomato soup. Good. now it's just like well there's tomato soup but that's kind of disappointing <laughs> is it though i think that that there's a lot i think tomato soup is like a great there are, um, there are some tomato soups that that can be really really good but like i do think that it pairs well with other things and like not having the other things that it pairs well with uh is 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 a letdown okay yeah i think the things that i would suggest to pairing like pairing it with would all contain gluten so also some people don't really believe soup is a meal yeah that's bullshit they're wrong <laughs> i'm not naming i'm not naming names but in my house oh, no. Some people have said soup is for sick people. <laughs> what? Oh dang! I I could I I love soup. I yeah. In in the final I'm, I'm really two minutes. Soup dinner. Yeah. In the oh. final two minutes, uh, mm-hmm. we can address uh, the phrase "guilty pleasure" is used to describe when someone likes a form of entertainment that is not universally well regarded. What would be a better name for this? Oh, I have, I have so many thoughts about this. I can't do it in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just pleasure. Just things you like. <laughs> I think that's fair. Yeah. Why does it have to be guilty? I don't believe in feeling guilty for things I like just because the population as a whole seems to not like it. I would like to use the word alt to alt somehow in there. Like prefix it alt. But alt pleasure sounds like a little... Ooh, yeah, that sounds a little racy. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I guess I, sh- yeah. I, I, should, I yeah. should prefix this with like... <laughs> yeah, with like as long as it's not like harming anyone or like subversive yeah. in some way that's like harmful. Right, Taylor Swift is my guilty pleasure, but like her music, so that's... But why yeah. is it... Is it gu- <laughs> but wh- is it guilty because you're like not supposed to or like... Because he's a boy. Because he's an adult male. He's not supposed to like Taylor Swift. He's, he's a great a adult male. He's not. Like... <laughs> I think that's all the more reason. I feel like that's her real niche and no one's talking about it. <laughs> I love that. I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole context of, guilt, of, the, of the idea of a guilty pleasure is that you, you don't fit into the box that we have built around this thing. But I immediately feel like I need to explain why, because it's more than just like, I like it, right? And that I think inherently is part of that being a guilty pleasure that there there is like an expectation that I need to justify it, and I can, but I'm not going to. Because you so shouldn't need to. Well, right is my point. Yeah. Yeah, but but that's all. Oh, I like what she's done music. Industry, that's all so cultural context too, because at one point in time, like playing D and D was a guilty pleasure that you would have yeah, to be embarrassed. Sure. And now I now I can walk into a room and said, yeah, we had, we had D and D last night, and like everybody's like, oh, cool, you know, like it's not totally. a thing. Um, right. So, like that, that shifts. What what is and it is, it, the way that it shifts is. Like... Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. 
Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.